Okay, so I'm going to try and sort the front brake system out. Uh, I've got this Brembo master cylinder off a crash bike, so it's damaged here, uh, a few other bits. I'm going to try and take the top reservoir off, run a remote or, you know, like the cylinder style reservoirs and see if I can use this one. They're probably about $750 for that, so if I can get this to work, I'll, I'll be in front. So let's pull it apart and see if it's a go or not. I'll unbolt the tank and I'll need to put the phone down to see if I can um, pop this tank off and basically I'm going to try and put a bleeder nipple here, the hose on the bottom and the remote reservoir should come out of that port there. That looks way easier than what I thought it would be. Um, there's a male barb there to push a hose onto, hang my uh, reservoir, bleeder nipple and brake line. Piece of cake. Okay, that's the that's the drilling and the tapping done. I'll just fit the heli coil and I'm a goer. Oh! Yes! Back down the shed once again. Gonna try and make some more progress this week. It's the uh, middle of summer, close to 40 degrees, so it's a lot hotter in this uh, back shed, but we will continue on. So I'm going to try and get the front brake master cylinder sorted out, so something that'll match up with the, with the Brembo calipers. Uh, also, I think I'll be reefing the plenum chamber, seeing if I can get the sides panelled in, sort the throttle bodies out, and the injectors and fuel rail. That'll most likely be the the parts I'll try and have a look at this week. Okay, let's do it. Well, the master cylinder bolted straight on. Uh, looks like it's gonna miss everything with a bit of luck. And yeah, I've also got a, a Brembo clutch master cylinder that could look pretty cool on this side. But when I rebuilt the slave cylinder, I noticed that the piston seemed a lot bigger than what's in a Ducati. So I'm not sure if that'll quite work. We'll worry about that one later. So, that's a goer. Might sit that plenum chamber and throttle body assembly on. See what's going on there. I've got the throttle bodies and plenum chamber assembly fitted. Um, it took me probably a good half an hour to get the throttle bodies back into the intake manifold rubbers. I forgot just how hard it was um, to get them in there. It was really quite tricky. I'll put the tank back on and I'm going to see if I've got my clearance, which I, I know that I have, but I just want to make sure. Um, might even tape the side up so I can visually look up there and make sure I'm going to have a, have a gap to the fuel tank. First hurdle I've hit fitting the fuel tank. Uh, basically, this fella here, I was able to tap it out, the bolt goes in and out. This guy here is thinking about turning the, the insert, the threaded insert. Uh, so the game plan, I'm going to repair the thread and fingers crossed I'll be able to uh, screw a stud into that which I'll cross drill and put R clips in so I don't have to keep pulling them in and out because that's sort of playing with fire to go much further trying to wind a bolt in and out of it. So that's me plan. I got the tap to do its job. It was trying to turn that insert all the time but we got there. So I've cut the two stainless bolts down. I've uh, backed it into the cordless drill. And now if I turn on the linisher. all rounded off so it doesn't damage the tank rubber. That's basically the idea. Uh, might need to make longer ones of these. I'm going to try and find some half nuts because they're only a lock nut and that affects the height of the tank. Um, yeah, so I'll sit the tank on and we'll see what it looks like. When they're all done and I've finished messing around that's when I'll cross drill them and get the R clips and the, the lock wire and whatnot. So with the tank back on the bike 
bolted at the rear. Um, the studs at the front that we're going to R clip to hold on the, the fuel tank. I'm sure it's been done a hundred times before, but that's the way we're going to do it today. Um, I'll pull the tank off now, tape up the plenum chamber, and just try and make sure I've definitely got some clearance under there before I send it out to the uh, fabrication shop. I've just run some masking tape across the, the holes that were chopped in the side of the plenum chamber, like that. And um, what I might try is I um, might draw a line around the, the perimeter and just see if I can use this as my template to get me in the ballpark. So I've just ran the pen around the, uh, the perimeter of the hole. So I'm going to stick it onto some cardboard and cut it out and see what I'm left with. That's just the tape. So I'm going to stick it onto this cardboard and chop it out. Well, that actually worked a lot better than what I thought. It's, um, yeah, it's basically the correct shape. And if I push that edge down, it'd fall into that hole too. So a crazy idea is a good thing. Okay, let's tape it on. That's all taped up and it actually worked really good. So the next plan is to do the other side and then throw the tank on, make sure we got that gap we need.